Ringspan offers a wide range of high-quality freewheel products. But how do they actually work? Let's take a deeper look. There are two main types of freewheels for industrial applications, Sprag-type freewheels and roller ramp-type freewheels. They work a little different, but the physics is the same. Let's start with the Sprag-type freewheels. Sprag-type freewheels consist of an inner ring, an outer ring, and the sprags in between. The sprags are basically like a roller sliced in half and displaced. If the outer ring now moves counterclockwise while the inner ring is fixed, friction will cause the sprags to roll counterclockwise as well. Thanks to their special design, the distance between the contact points of the sprag will increase and the freewheel locks. If the outer ring is turned clockwise, the distance between the contact points is decreased and the freewheel opens. In reality, the shape of the sprags is a little more complex. The shape of an actual sprag is a combination of multiple radii with different center points. The deviation of these radii forms a clamping wedge that is responsible for the clamping effect. A spring forces the sprag into contact to ensure an immediate engagement at any time. When the freewheel engages, the forces Fi and Fa appear on the line of influence, connecting the points of contact. These forces are equal in magnitude and can be divided into the normal forces Fni and Fna, as well as the tangential forces Fti and Fta. The angles between the normal forces Fni and Fna and the line of influence are called clamping angles epsilon i and epsilon a. The inner clamping angle epsilon i is larger than the outer clamping angle epsilon a. To achieve a self-locking effect, the tangent of epsilon i must be larger than the friction coefficient mu. The transmitted torque is calculated as the product of the number of sprags. The radius of the track the normal force and the clamping angle. The clamping angles and forces automatically adapt to the applied torque. Now, how about roller ramp type freewheels? Roller ramp freewheels consist of cylindrical rollers, an inner ring and an outer ring, one with a cylindrical track, the other one with ramps equally distributed around the circumference. They use a clamping effect to transmit torque, too. In opposition to sprag freewheels, the clamping wedge is provided by the ramps on either the inner or outer ring. When turned in locking direction, the rollers move up the ramp, reducing the gap between inner and outer ring. Spring-loaded pins push the rollers up the ramps to ensure immediate engagement at any time. The mechanics are similar to the Sprag freewheel. The forces Fa and Fi appear on the line of influence that connects the contact points. These can be split into the normal forces Fna and Fni, as well as the tangential forces Fta and Fti. In opposition to the Sprag freewheel, the clamping angle formed by the normal forces and the line of influence is equal at both contact points. To achieve self-locking, the tangent of epsilon must be larger than the friction coefficient mu. The transmitted torque is again calculated as the product of the number of rollers, the radius of the cylindrical track, the normal force and the clamping angle. The clamping angles and forces automatically adapt to the applied torque. This is how friction-based freewheels work. If you want to learn more about freewheels, watch our other videos, for example on centrifugal liftoff, or visit our website. Your benefit is our motivation.